And now I am going to give the floor uh, to the President of the Americans United for Palestinian Human Rights, uh, Mr. Peter Miller, who will make a statement on behalf of the civil society organizations uh, which are active uh, on the question of Palestine. Mr. Miller, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary General, Mr. President, Excellencies. I'm honored to speak to you today on the solemn commemoration of the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people. I am but one voice among many from global civil society who are deeply concerned about the plight of Palestinians resulting from Israel's policies of occupation, settlement, siege, and the denial of Palestinian rights. Many civil society activists around the world have de dedicated their lives seeking a just resolution to the Palestine-Israel conflict. Some have paid a huge price for their efforts. And why must civil society pay such a high price? It is because of the failure, Your Excellencies, of the United Nations and governments to implement international law. As an American, I am deeply disturbed, as are many Americans, by the role that my government plays in preventing Palestinians from achieving their aspirations and their human rights. The U.S. unconditionally gives Israel $3 billion every year in military aid and ignores Israel's many systematic and continuing human rights violations. Those include the illegal use of military weapons against civilian populations, the ever-expanding Israeli settlements, the expansion of its separation wall on Palestinian lands, the treatment of its Palestinian citizens as second-class human beings, and the denial of the rights of Palestinian refugees. One of the challenges to the UN and the international community, if you truly are committed to upholding the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, is to confront the deeply negative role of the U.S. in perpetuating injustice and enabling Israel to continue to violate international law and destroy the possibility of realizing Palestinian aspirations. The admission of Palestine into the UN organization, UNESCO, is a great victory for the UN and the voice of people around the world. 107 countries, representing over 75% of the world's population, voted to include Palestine. Truly, we the people of the United Nations. Unfortunately, the Obama administration was eager to enforce archaic U.S. laws and cut off U.S. dues to UNESCO. Also unfortunate is the fact that the Obama and earlier U.S. administrations have failed to uphold other U.S. laws conditioning military aid to countries such as Israel, which use U.S. supplied weapons against civilian populations. The U.N. is challenged to uphold its charter in the face of all the various anti-democratic pressures the U.S. brings to bear, whether it is spying on U.N. officials, pressuring independent countries economically and politically, or threatening the U.N. itself with economic sanctions. The U.N. must defend its founding principles despite these pressures, and the global community must be ready to increase economic and diplomatic press support for the U.N. and UNESCO. One of the great advancements of civilization has been the development of the concept of the rule of law that human beings have universal rights and that there should be international institutions that work to safeguard these rights, especially in times of conflict and military occupation. The principles embodied in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilian persons in time of war, and other laws lay out this framework. The challenge for the UN is not to develop new laws or to express new sentiments, but to implement these existing universal principles and its existing resolutions to protect Palestinian human rights. The whole concept of universal rights and the protection of civilians is endangered when powerful nations can pick and choose in defiance of international bodies and global opinion to whom these laws apply and for whom they are ignored. The law should be universal. For Palestinians, the UN and other established institutions have failed to implement these universal principles and have been unable to hold the powerful accountable for their oppression of the weak. So it has become necessary for a global civil society to step into this void. This is what is happening around the world, including in the United States, on behalf of Palestinian human rights. This is why there is a growing movement of boycott, divestment, and sanctions 
to bring nonviolent pressure on the State of Israel to end its systematic violations. The Russell Tribunal is yet another expression of global civil society responding to the failure of the UN and governments to uphold the law. One of Bertrand Russell's last accomplishments was the establishment with uh, French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre of the Russell Tribunal to investigate the role of the United States in the war in Vietnam. The tribunal was established as a means of civil society to bring to the light the evidence of war crimes ignored by the United States government and by other nations and international institutions. Russell declared, may this tribunal prevent the crime of silence. A new Russell Tribunal on Palestine has been reconvened with three sessions to date to examine Israel's treatment of the Palestinians. The most recent session was held November of this year in South Africa with judges including Nobel Peace Laureate uh, Mareid Corrigan Maguire, Emeritus Judge of Spain Supreme Court Jose Antonio Martin Palin, African American poet Alice Walker, and South African writer and activist Ronald Casrells. They examined the question of whether Israel is engaged in the crime of apartheid. Israeli human rights activist Jeff Halper, director of the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions, said, quote, states along with the United Nations are obligated to enforce international law and human rights conventions. When they don't, as in their failure to apply to Israel and its occupation, the International Convention on the Suppression and Punishment of the Crime of Apartheid, the people themselves must rise up and demand that they do. Civil society forums, such as the Russell Tribunal, may not carry formal authority, but they do represent millions of people the world over who believe that simply leaving governments free to pursue their narrow agendas driven by power, sectarian ideology, militarism, and the profits of a few is to doom us all to continued war, bloodshed, and injustice, end quote. The tri tribunal concluded that Israel does indeed engage in the crime of apartheid. Quote, Israel subjects the Palestinian people to an institutionalized regime of domination amounting to apartheid as defined under international law. Palestinians living under colonial military rule in the occupied Palestinian territory are subject to a particularly aggravated form of apartheid. Palestinian citizens of Israel, while entitled to vote, are not part of the Jewish nation as defined by Israeli law and are therefore excluded from the benefits of Jewish nationality and subject to systematic discrimination across the broad spectrum of recognized human rights. Irrespective of such differences, the tribunal concludes that Israel's rule over the Palestinian people, wherever they reside, collectively amounts to a single integrated regime of apartheid." End quote. The Russell Tribunal is not the first time Israeli apartheid has been identified. In 1961, Hendrik Forvoort, then president of South Africa and considered the architect of the system of apartheid, stated, Israel, like South Africa, is an apartheid state. Both Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela have expressed concerns that Israel's behavior was similar to what they experienced under South African apartheid. Mandela remarked that, quote, the UN took a strong stand against apartheid, and over the years an international consensus was built, which helped to bring an end to this inequitous system. But we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. End quote. In 2009, the Human Sciences Research Council of South Africa issued a report concluding that Israel practices both apartheid and colonialism. In 2010, Henry Siegman, former national director of the American Jewish Congress, said, quote, Israel has crossed the threshold from the only democracy in the Middle East to the only apartheid regime in the rest Western world, end quote. Now in 2011, we can add to the conclusions of the uh, Russell Tribunal on Palestine. Palestinian rights must no longer be held hostage to the domestic politics of the United States. Israel should not escape UN censure simply because it refuses to cooperate with international institutions. International law demands condemnation of Israel's violations and crucially, Your Excellencies, decisive action to reverse them. Palestinian dignity is assaulted on a daily basis. Both the Palestinian and Israeli people are diminished each passing day as you allow these Israeli policies to continue. 
Every day a tree is destroyed or a home is demolished. Every day a Bedouin village inside Israel is ground down by bulldozers or Palestinians in the West Bank are attacked by settler pogroms that turn their lives into lives of fear. Every day critical medicines go lacking in Gaza and Gazans are forced to drink brackish water unfit for human consumption. The so-called quartet has failed. But while many question whether the UN should have ever agreed to participate in such a sham diplomacy, you can still play a constructive role by moving quickly to implement the necessary preconditions for serious and honest negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians based on the enforcement of international law. Excellencies, you must separate Israel's legitimate security concerns from its illegitimate political agenda. The International Court of Justice ruling on the illegality of Israel's wall made just this sort of distinction, determining that Israel may build its wall on Israeli land, but Israel cannot build its wall on Palestinian land, destroying Palestinian farms and homes, separating Palestinian villages and towns from each other. And it is illegal, not simply unhelpful, for Israel to build settlements on Palestinian lands. Israel violates international law when it imposes collective punishment on the people of Gaza. UN-based solutions must be found to mitigate all of these issues. The international community must demand that Israel end its assault on Gaza to kill and injure civilians and destroy civilian infrastructure in an endless cycle of international development assistance repeatedly destroyed by Israel's U.S.-supplied bombs and missiles and US, Israel's uh, U.S.-supplied Caterpillar bulldozers. All that is lacking is your will to impose solutions rooted in international law. One of the privileges of working within civil society for Palestinian justice is witnessing the coming together of people from many origins working together for justice. In my own small group, we have Jewish Americans, Palestinian Americans, Christians, Muslims, and secular people who recognize in each other our common humanity. This is replicated around the world. We in global civil society seek to rise above narrow national and tribal self-interest and truly believe that peace is possible when our common humanity is recognized and justice is implemented. We honor the efforts of those Israelis who recognize that peace for Israel comes through justice for Palestinians. We honor the efforts of activists and UN workers from around the world many who have risked their comfort and sometimes their lives in the name of justice. Though there are wide ranges of opinion about the, what the various solutions may be, we are united in the recognition of our common humanity and our dreams of living together as equals on this small blue planet. Thank you very much. I thank Mr. Peter Miller for his statement. I would also like to thank, through him, all civil society organizations that are active on the question of Palestine throughout for their work in support of and in solidarity with the Palestinian people. Ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor now to announce that our committee has received messages of support and solidarity from many heads of state and government, from ministers for foreign affairs, governments, and organizations. I would like to remind you that the texts of the messages will be published in a special bulletin of the Division for Palestinian Rights. I would like to read out the list of officials who have sent them in the order they were received. We have received messages from the following heads of state. The President of the Republic of Senegal, the President of the Lao Republic, the President of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the President of the Russian Federation, the President of the Republic of Argentina, the President of the Republic of Belarus, the President of the Federal Republic of Brazil, the uh, Sultan of Brunei Dar es Salaam, and the President of the Democratic Republic of Sri Lanka, the President of the Republic of Indonesia, the President of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, the President of Turkey, His Majesty the King of Bahrain, His Majesty the King of Morocco, 
the President of the Republic of Guinea, the President of the Republic of Namibia, the President of the United Arab Emirates, the President of Afghanistan, the President of South Africa, and the King of the Hashemite Republic of Jordan. We have also received the messages from the following heads of government. The Prime Minister of India, the Prime Minister of Malaysia, and the and the uh, head of the government of China. The committee has also received messages from the following ministers for foreign affairs. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of Cuba, also of that of Madagascar, Japan, and Saudi Arabia. We have received messages from the following governments. The government of the Sultanate of Oman and the committee has also received messages from the following organizations. The Secretary General of the Organization for Islamic Cooperation and the European Union. On behalf of the committee, I would like to express uh, also there is a civil society organization, the Presbyterian Ministry of the United Nations. On behalf of the committee, I would like to express our sincere appreciation to the heads of state and government, ministers for foreign affairs, governments, and the organizations that I have just mentioned, and to all participants in this meeting for their persistent efforts aimed at achieving a comprehensive, just, and lasting settlement of the question of Palestine and for the support they have always given to the mandated activities of this committee. The statements that we have heard today and the message, messages of solidarity demonstrate once again the unwavering support of the international community for the establishment of peace in the Middle East and the realization by the Palestinian people of its inalienable rights on the basis of the relevant United Nations resolutions and international law. I can assure you that our committee, the Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People, will spare no effort in its pursuance of these objectives. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the pleasure to give the floor to the Permanent Observer of Palestine to the United Nations, His Excellency Dr. Riyad Mansour. You have the floor. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman colleagues, Ambassador Borg and Ambassador Kohona, ladies and gentlemen, we are grateful to you, Mr. Chairman, and to the Committee on the Exercise on the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People for organizing this commemoration. We are also grateful to the Division on Palestinian Rights at the United Nations for collaborating in making this commemoration a reality. We are very grateful to all of you who are present here, representing governments and representing civil societies, and also, we are very grateful to the leaders from all corners of the globe in, in expressing solidarity with the Palestinian people. These uh, messages and letters, whether some of them have been read to us in this meeting or uh, have been received by the chairman of the committee, we are very grateful for this very strong uh, message of support from the peoples of the world and the leaders of the world in this very important day of International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people. With your collective effort, along with the struggle of our people, the Palestinian people, we were able to create the moment <coughs> that led to uh, the submittal of our application to join the community of nations as a member of the UN by our president on the 23rd of September of this year. And we are grateful for that collective effort. 
with your collective effort along with the struggle of our people, the Palestinian people, we were able to succeed in acquiring admission to UNESCO, which is a historic development in which, for the first time in the history of the Palestinian people and the question of Palestine, the state of Palestine was recognized by a, a major UN agency as a member and therefore opened the door for us not to be an issue under debate, but the state of Palestine is a reality. It exists. We exist as a nation, we exist as a people, and we exist as a state, and UNESCO accepted us as such, and we understand according to international law. Therefore, we are an accepted reality as a state in the UN system, and we are grateful for that. With your collective effort, along with the struggle of our Palestinian people, we will succeed, and hopefully soon, in ending the Israeli occupation to our Palestinian land, including East Jerusalem. And we will succeed in achieving independence and full membership at the United Nations. And we hope that next year, around this time, our celebration or commemoration will be of a different nature, not only expressing solidarity with the Palestinian people, but maybe celebrating the victory of the Palestinian people in ending occupation and becoming a full member at the United Nations. And maybe all of us, along with thousands, would line in front of this building to raise the flag of Palestine at the United Nations. Again, Mr. Chairman, uh, we want to thank you on behalf of the Palestinian people and their leadership, and we will never forget <clears throat> the work of the Palestine Committee at the United Nations and the division and all of our friends who are helping us to accomplish the objectives of the Palestinian people. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.